What's going on guys? Jacob Orth back here with another video of Jacob's Life in Vegas coming to you guys with a topic that I think a lot of you are going to want to uh, talk about here. So please subscribe down below. This is going to be a big one that affects a lot of you looking at moving here in Nevada, if you already live here in Nevada, and actually those of you who just live in other states out west. This is a big topic about Californians moving to other states, particularly here in Nevada, and the effect it has on the local culture. So here's the way I want to break this down for you guys. I want to talk mostly about, you know, which states are being affected by this the most, because there are tens of millions of people living across different states that are being affected by Californians leaving California. I also want to talk about the common changes that happen when you have so many Californians moving to another state, because there's a lot of changes that take place. California is unique and different, to say the least, in a lot of ways from the rest of the country. And then I also want to talk about Nevada and how I think certain things are just unique here to Nevada, and it'll be a little bit different to change the culture here in Nevada versus other states. And a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about in this video, guys, is just very public information. It's actually, if you just do a fair amount of research, it's not that hard to find. I'll link videos and uh, certain things like up here throughout the video, and I'll put a bunch of links for stuff down below the description. So let's talk about states that are primarily affected by so many Californians moving. Because California right now, their population is right around 40 million people. Uh, the population has grown because, you know, people there do keep having more and more kids. But in terms of people moving in and moving out of California, actually in recent years, California has lost people. They have had more people move out of California than move into California, which has an impact on the states where people are leaving too. So a lot of states have been impacted. Like, you know, Oregon and Washington, those are probably the first that come to mind. And a lot of people would say, you know, those are basically a lost cause, you know, the Californians moving there. Uh, other states, you know, like right here in Nevada has been affected by so many Californians moving. Arizona has been affected. I know Texas has been affected, particularly the Austin area of Texas seems to be a big one for Californians to move to. Austin, Texas seems to be really popular. Uh, this has affected people in Utah, uh, definitely affected people in Colorado. And the latest state I think that's been affected by this is actually uh, Idaho. Idaho is what I think a lot of Californians thought was just kind of, you know, just some state just up there, some small state you didn't really ever want to go to. But there's a lot of Californians, like 20% of I think the people who move into Idaho come from California. I watched a good video this summer about, I think it's called, Do Californians Feel Welcomed When They Move to Idaho? Because that's just another trend of Californians moving to other states. So let's talk about some of the changes and the issues and things that happen, you know, when Californians move to these other states, you know, because there are a lot of things that do take place. And I want to hear about, you know, what you guys think about this in the comments. And I'll cover what I can here, but I'm sure I cannot cover every single thing. Now, there are things that people just, you know, generally seem to not like about Californians. Like when they move to an area, you know, they might seem kind of distant. They seem reluctant to engage in the local culture. You know, things like, you know, when you're walking down the street, like on your morning walk, like they won't look you in the eye and say, hey, good morning. You know, they won't say, like, acknowledge your existence, things like that. They feel Californians don't respect the local culture when they move to another state. You know, things like they move there and they say, well, in California, we do things this way. And the, the locals are like, well, if California's so great, why don't you live there? You know, <laughs> things like that. There are cultural clashes that happen when you go to other states. But one of the big things that happens is when you have so many people moving to other places and other areas, it's just the congestion, the population going up and up and up. And there's a lot of things that come with that and a lot of them are things that people are not looking forward to. You know, when places get bigger, when metro areas get bigger, cities get bigger, you know, things that happen, like obviously you lose land, right? That's one of the reasons I'm at this, doing this video here today. Guys, I am in Red Rock right now. I'm in Red Rock Canyon. And just here a couple years ago, there was a developer who wanted to buy a whole bunch of land in Red Rock and put, I don't, I don't remember how many thousands of homes in the area, but a lot of people here locally fought back against it and they were at meetings for the Clark County Commission and they fought back against it and pushed back and there's even a hashtag on Twitter called Save Red Rock. And people didn't like it because they wanted to build here and you know, this open land we have, it's just part of our natural beauty for this state. It's absolutely amazing. Tons of locals and tourists alike both come here to use it. So people are like saying, no, you can go build somewhere else. Like we have a lot of desert and other places, go build somewhere else, go build out in the desert somewhere else. Don't ruin our state's natural beauty we have to put thousands of homes here, many of which you know are gonna be bought by Californians moving here because they'll sell their home for a million, million and a half dollars or whatever the case is in California. And they'll just buy at least one home here with cash or several homes. So a lot of times the local population pushes back against that because they don't want that. Other things that happen when you have, you know, uh, population increasing like that, what happens too when, you know, you lose land? Cost of living goes up. The cost of living becomes higher in an area, right? Gas prices are typically higher in bigger cities than they are in rural areas. When cost of living goes up, when places get more crowded, you have homes that get like more, that become more and more and more packed into each other, you know? I mean, when I go back to California and I visit Los Angeles, or I visit San Francisco, I mean, people joke in Vegas about new homes being like built, you know, close to each other. You can always reach out and like touch your neighbor's home, which you can't. I haven't seen any place where you can do that yet even though they are built fairly close together in san francisco there's houses literally touching each other like literally i mean just 
pushed up against each other, touching. And those homes are for a million dollars plus if you want to buy one. Literally touching each other. That's how crowded it can get in certain places. Crowding doesn't just affect you in homes, it also affects you in every part of your daily life. Because I'm mean, just going to the gas station, right? Last time I was in Los Angeles, I go to the gas station and I am like blocked in trying to get gas. There's like a car in front of me, two cars to my left. Even after I'm done gassing up, I gotta wait for the car in front of me to move, get by all the other traffic. This is like in the morning time. This is like late morning, okay? It's not even like during rush hour traffic. So you're so, even, the, even then you're just locked and you're just trapped because there's so many other people and there's so much congestion in the area. When I go get gas in Vegas, there's plenty of space at the gas station. I mean, everybody can be getting gas at their station. There's a whole middle lane. You can just drive right through the other cars because we have enough space out here for that. We're not totally cramped and congested like Los Angeles, like San Francisco, or like some other places. The other things that come with so many people moving to an area that people hate are things like traffic increasing, right? Traffic goes up, traffic becomes worse, it becomes much more congested. I mean, you know, what used to be a 15 minute commute might take you 30 minutes or more now just because so many people are moving to an area and if the area isn't, isn't designed to, you know, expand for growth, fortunately Vegas I think is, is in a good spot to develop for growth. But you go to some older cities like, you know, like up in Seattle, when I was in Seattle, I mean, that place was crowded, it was congested, like that place was not prepared, did not have, you know, available land for that much growth and that many people to move there. So you see cities like that where it's like they don't have the space for the growth and yet it doesn't stop anybody from moving in. So you have crowdedness, you have congestion that happens more in those places, which leads to what? More traffic, longer times in traffic, bad driving. That's one people really get irritated with is the bad driving. You know, people complain about driving in Vegas, but whenever I go back to LA, I see so many just stunts people pull when they're driving. I mean, it was just, it's kind of crazy some of the stuff you see out there, you know, and even just when it comes to parking, people like bad driving, bad parking, can't just park their car like straight in a normal spot. They can't fit it in there. And it just becomes a headache for people, just part of your daily life. Now, you could argue that, you know, when you do get more people in an area, you know, there is more opportunity. You could say, hey, there's more opportunities for different industries to come up. There's more opportunity for growth in other areas. You know, there's a lot more that comes with it uh, when you have bigger cities. And that's true. You do have more opportunity. You do have more ways that people can get other jobs or they can, you know, try to, um, you know, climb the economic ladder. But what's on the flip side of that? You also have more people who wind up being poor, right? Big cities, you tend to have a bigger gap between people who have a lot of money and people who are really poor. You know, middle class is a hard place to be in a lot of really big cities. But you have the people who are really wealthy, but on the flip side, you've got more homeless people. I mean, I think it's four out of the top 10 cities in America for most homeless people are in California. San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Jose, and San Diego. Vegas is actually on that list, but all four of those California cities are right above Las Vegas. So, I mean, you know, 40% of the cities, you know, that have the most homeless people are in California. Now, there's parts of LA you can go to, and it's just sad to see because they're just blocks and blocks and blocks of homeless people. People just walking in the street. I mean, you know, some people say it looks like, you know, like the walking of the dead or the zombie apocalypse or something like that because there's just homeless people everywhere. What also comes oftentimes with the homelessness in all these cities is that the crime goes up. This is happening all over California, right? San Francisco probably being the prime target of this because I've heard more this year, more videos on YouTube I've seen, more reports on the news of just the homelessness problem getting worse and worse and worse in San Francisco, where you have people, homeless people just taking a crap out in the streets in the middle of the day, the amount of human waste along sidewalks. And I remember seeing some of that 10 or 12 years ago when I was there. I remember driving broad daylight over by the Civic Center in San Francisco and seeing a homeless person just taking a dump in the bushes in broad daylight. I mean, you didn't see a whole lot of that, you know, in small towns. You're not going to see a whole lot of that stuff. So you get some of these big cities, you get the homeless population gets really big. That becomes part of your daily life. There's also stories of homeless people just, you know, injecting themselves with drugs, shooting up while they're in the street in public eye. I mean, you see videos of people walking with their kids down the street and there's just needles all over the place. I mean, it's like that's not a place people really want to raise their kids in. It's not something people want in their state when they think of, you know, some of the things that happen in California. I mean, it doesn't even cost place like San Francisco's cost them business. There was a convention earlier this year that decided to cancel because they didn't like the fact that, you know, the city was so dirty. There were so many homeless people. There were concerns about crime, concerns about safety. Uh, there's another video I saw a news report earlier this year in the hate district in San Francisco. The people there say they're concerned to go, you know, outside their neighborhood at all because they have fights breaking out in the middle of the day and they're just concerned with the homeless population, with the drug problems they have there, with the crime they have there, that that's not a good neighborhood to live in anymore. And now there's even an app someone developed in San Francisco called Snapcrap. 
I'm not kidding you guys. This is real. I actually looked this up. You can find it on the uh, app store. I mean, it's called Snap Crap, which basically helps give you like a map of where, you know, all the human crap is on the streets and on the sidewalks of San Francisco. So you can help, you know, navigate your way around. You don't step in anything as you're trying to just go about your daily life. Also, what comes with the growing population and, of course, you know, more people who end up living in poverty, living in homelessness, you have more people who live in, and get into the gang life, right? And that's unfortunate because it, because it does help commit to crime, oftentimes in areas where people are more active in gangs. Now, with that, you also you're going to have to have a bigger police force because you need more cops, obviously, on the streets. You have more people to patrol. You have a bigger area to cover. But, you know, any organization that gets bigger, whether it's public or private, the bigger the organization gets, the harder it becomes to manage because you have so many people, you have so many moving parts, it just becomes a challenge. And that's just something that people obviously just don't like to see in an area where, you know, it used to be small town to them, you know, everybody used to know everybody, and there used to be lots of open land, it was beautiful, and then all of a sudden you just see like, bam, here's a home, you know, subdevelopment, here's another subdevelopment next to it, and people just like, they just don't like the fact of, you know, losing so much of the land they have and seeing the population grow and a lot of the, pop a lot of the problems that come with with that. Another thing that is associated with California very commonly, and you know, California has definitely earned the reputation for this, is high taxes. Being a state of high taxes, and I'm not just talking about, you know, personal income tax, which California does have is incredibly high, but also there's other areas of taxes, you know, on individuals and on businesses, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, is just the amount of taxes they place on people and the amount of taxes that you just have to, you know, deal with if you're going to live in a place like that. And the ironic part of all this is with California having, you know, one of the uh, top 10 biggest economies or top 10 strongest economies in the world. I mean, California by itself is one of the strongest economies in the world. And with that, it's crazy because the state also has an incredible amount of debt. It's like, I saw a report in 2017 that said California uh, was the number one state for how much debt they have in terms of uh, you know their liabilities versus their assets. They had the most debt debt to uh, income ratio of any state in the country. Nevada was like number 15 in that ranking. And then in 2018, I saw another one that said California was number five. They still had more debt than they have assets in that state. And Nevada was like number 23, somewhere in the middle on there. So it's like for California, so you're taking in all this money of such a strong, powerful economy of so much in terms of resources available to you, so much natural resource in that state, so much intellectual resource in places like Silicon Valley. There's so much you know, that could be produced in that state, yet you still have debt, you still have tons of debt. So people wonder like, well, if you're paying that much money, like how do you still have that much debt? Like where's the money going? And one of the things California does to its citizens who live there is they just pass the cost along to you, to the individual. They pass the cost along to the citizen. Like when California started to charge 10 cents for uh, plastic bags at the grocery store. I was living in San Jose when that happened in Santa Clara County. That was actually where it started. And then a few years later, it eventually became law across the entire state of California. You know, other, another thing that happened, I remember in Oakland during the recession, is, you know, when uh, the recession hit, a lot of people lost their jobs, they had their hours cut, they didn't have enough money coming in. Well, the government still wants as much money as they can get. They still, you know, they don't really cut as much as you, the individual, do. You know, the government has no problem spending as much money as possible. So one of the things they did in Oakland was they extended the parking meter hours in the city of Oakland, I think from 6 p.m. to like 8 p.m. at night or something like that. So they just said, hey, you know, you the citizen, I know you don't have as much money, I know you're not working as much, I know everybody's hurting, but you know, we the government still need your money and we need more of it because, you know, we're having shortfalls in our taxes right now. So they extend parking media hours, just hand it off to you, the citizen, hurt businesses by doing it. Business owners were complaining like crazy and they eventually rolled it back. But you have other cities now like Sacramento, they started um, having parking meters downtown. You have to pay until like 10 o'clock at night just to be parking in downtown Sacramento. So that's one of the things California does. It's really unfortunate. They just, you know, the state spends like crazy and they don't have enough. They just find a way to pass it off to you, you know, the individual. Unfortunately, you know, just the fact that parking meters is not enough for California. They just find other ways to ding you, especially with driving, you know, parking tickets. That's a huge one. I got a parking ticket. You know, again, we're talking 10, 12 years ago in San Francisco, San Francisco is like 50, $60 just for the ticket, for an expired meter ticket. You know, I think in LA, last time I was there, someone uh, talked to a meter maid who said it was like 85 bucks or something for a parking ticket if you're on the meter and it's past the time. I mean, they just pass off huge costs to people. You know, when I came to Vegas, it was like 25 bucks <laughs> when I got one in downtown Las Vegas for being past the meter. So as cities get bigger, as they get more crowded, more congested, more, and land becomes more of a premium, those costs keep getting added and added and added more and more to your life. And one of the last big changes I will talk about when it comes to California and the differences in culture is the anti-business environment in California. This goes along with some of the high taxes I mentioned earlier, a lot of the costs they pass on to business owners, 
owners in the form of taxes, in the form of having to constantly raise raise employees' wages, which you know, when you raise employees' wages, that means the business to pay more, which means they lose more money in profit, which means they have to add costs somewhere else, usually to the price. Usually they have to pass along the cost to the customer to make up for that lost revenue if they want to stay open and stay in business. The very first couple I helped buy a home here was uh, from Sonoma. They're from Sonoma, California. They had a home-based business, a married couple. They had one child and they wanted to move here to Southern Nevada uh, to Henderson's where they wanted to move. They wanted to move to Henderson. They reached out to me and said, hey, Jacob, do you know a good realtor that you can refer us to you know, in the air? And I said, yes, I do. I refer them to a realtor. They went through the process just fine. They got a home in the neighborhood they wanted and the price range they wanted in a good school district that they wanted. And the big reason they said they were leaving is because the costs keep going up and the high taxes and the high cost of doing business in California. They're trying to grow their business. They're trying to produce and become, you know, good producers for the economy. And California essentially keeps punishing them for that, making it harder and harder for them to operate. And that's part of the problem in the state of California is all these regulations, all these costs you add to businesses. You know, you're really hurting the small businesses. You're really hurting the mom and pop businesses. Big corporations, they can absorb that cost. You know, they don't like it, but they can absorb it way better than the small mom and pop can. So really you're hurting small businesses when you add all of those costs. Cost. So with all that said, you guys, let's talk about some things about Nevada that I think make Nevada different, okay? And that will, meet, will make Nevada hard to change, you know, as opposed to a place like Oregon or Washington, you know, that's had so many Californians move up there and has changed, this, changed those states quite a bit. You know, something about Nevada that is unique that I think a lot of people don't quite understand is the strong libertarian history and libertarian culture of the state here in Nevada. That's something I think a lot of people don't quite get. Because a big part of libertarian philosophy is essentially that you can do whatever you want as long as you're not hurting someone else, as long as you're not infringing on someone else's rights. That's a big part of libertarian ideology. That's why here in Nevada, we're the only state that has legalized prostitution out in the rural parts of Nevada, you know, not here in Las Vegas or in Reno. But in the rural parts, we have legalized prostitution. We have 24-hour drinking. 24-hour gambling here in the state. We have a strong gun culture here because, you know, if you want to go to a brothel out in Pahrump, hey, you can do it. You know, a lot of people here have probably never been to Pahrump. I've never even been to Pahrump, okay? Since I've lived here in Nevada, the only county I've been to is Clark County. I've been up to Washoe County, been up to Reno numerous times growing up uh, in California and been to Clark County several times. But, you know, I haven't gone through like all the rural parts of the state yet. You know, so some people, if you want to go out to Pahrump and that's what you want to do, you know, you want to go to a brothel and have fun and spend your money, go for it. It's like, you do what you want with your own money. Same thing with drinking. If you want to drink at 3 a.m. or 3 p.m., that's your choice. Now you're responsible for the decisions you make. If you go drink and you get on the road and you kill someone, you're going to be held liable for that. You know, if you want to have a firearm to defend yourself, it is your right to have a firearm. You know, you can open carry here in Nevada. You can also conceal carry. So you have that right to defend yourself and to exercise your constitutional right to carry a firearm here. You know, it's like with gambling. So, hey, you can gamble if you want. You can gamble a little bit. You can gamble a lot. You can gamble not at all. But if you gamble all your money away, that's your responsibility. It's your fault you did that. That's part of Nevada here. It's like you can do what you want. It's live and let live without infringing on your rights. That's one thing about Nevada has a strong culture that's different than California. Now with guns, there was a bit of a, you know, there was some potential to change laws here with guns recently. Uh, 2015, certain things about, you know, the concealed carry weapons permit process did change, uh, I think for the better when it came to, you know, to handguns. It made it simpler for people uh, who wanted to carry handguns here, you know, in Nevada. Uh, and then in 2016, there's actually a um, question on the ballot that passed about the background check. Well, it barely passed. I mean, I think just by a couple thousand votes, it was almost 50-50, it barely passed, but then it was blocked um, by the Attorney General here of the state. And a lot of people here, especially even people in government, do support, you know, your gun rights here. I remember seeing an article several years ago that, you know, that's one thing that even, you know, here like Republicans and Democrats, the two major parties, uh, can agree on is, you know, protecting people's gun rights. And, you know, I'll tell you a story of a candidate who one time was running for office and he told me that he was trying to get the um, endorsement of a, you know, organization here is a police organization. There's a lot of law enforcement organizations, but he's trying to get their endorsement. And he said when he went to go speak to them, one of the very first thing that he got asked was, you know, what do you think about the Second Amendment? And this candidate goes, well, you know, they're just kind of like a computer person, not like a big fire person, apparently. And the, and the person says, um, well, I think our founding fathers put you know, the Second Amendment in the Constitution in case you guys get out of hand. <laughs> And this person I'm getting the endorsement of this organization. So even a lot of your law enforcement here in Nevada, they support your right to carry. They support your Second Amendment right. So a lot of people in the government do support your right to carry a firearm here. 
Also, this is a good one for those of you that are concerned about taxes here in Nevada. If you say, well, if Nevada ever added, you know, a state income tax or something like that, you know, to the state, it would be just awful for the state. And I agree it would because that's something that attracts a lot of people here is the fact that we have no state income tax. One thing to know, though, the reason we have no state income tax is because that is actually in our Nevada state constitution, right? The U.S. has its own constitution people are familiar with, but lots of states have their own constitution as well. And I'll actually read it to you guys here in the Nevada state constitution, Article 10, Section 1. This is from when Nevada became a state, October 31st, 1864 by Abraham Lincoln. It says, No income tax shall be levied upon the wages or personal income of natural persons. Also in there, you guys will like, is no inheritance tax shall be levied. That's in our constitution. It's been in there for over a hundred years. And that's something that I don't think is gonna be changing anytime soon. I mean, you don't just, you know, snap your fingers and change the state's constitution overnight. Plus, a lot of people here, I think regardless of political affiliation, that's the big thing that drew them here was the fact that there are no state income taxes. So I don't think people would be really pushing for that anyway. And even if they tried to, it'd be a long process to try to get that changed. But with that being said, I think there are a lot of things here in Nevada that you know, we don't have to worry about changing anytime soon, right? I mean, even uh, I've never seen an organized push to you know, end gambling here in this state. Never seen a real organized push to end you know, the brothels or to end you know, the 24 hour drink. You've never seen a big organized push, uh, really, even after the tragedy last uh, in 2017 in October that happened. You know, even after that, I did not see a really big organized push to change the gun laws here. And in 2018, there's actually nothing on the ballot about changing gun laws here in Nevada. Which brings me to the point talking about, you know, some people worried about the political landscape and how it's changing here in Nevada. Well, one thing to remember, if you ever look at Nevada, you know, going back to its, you know, first ever presidential election, you actually look at like a chart of how Nevada has gone in presidential elections. Um, Nevada has been a swing state really it's this entire time. It's gone back and forth between the two major parties, uh, Democrat and Republican, basically since forever. Politics are weird here in Nevada because one of the biggest things about this state is Nevada is by far the most transient state in the union. 76% of our population is born and raised, is born outside the state of Nevada. That's a better way to put it. 76% of the population is born outside the state of Nevada. That is double digit lead over Florida. The next closest state is like 60 5%. Our population changes so much year after year after year after year that it's really hard to predict which way Nevada is going to go come election time because so many people come and go from the state every single year. And you would think it's just tons of Californians moving here, which does happen. But, you know, with Californians, there's a couple of things people need to remember. You know, a lot of the, the stereotypes here about Californians really come from like two major areas, the San Francisco Bay Area and the Los Angeles area in my eyes. Okay, other big cities, you know, hold up similar stereotypes too. But as you get more inland into California, you get up into like the mountains and like way up northern California, Jefferson Territory, a lot of the people, they don't like a lot of the same thing. And some of those people are the ones leaving California along with people, you know, from the big cities who leave as well. So in California, you have a lot of Californians who come here. Some of them, and they do vote differently, definitely. Uh, but you also have a lot of people coming from the Midwest, from the East Coast, from other states. You know, a lot of retirees who come here, they don't want to pay any more in taxes. Also, over 20% of our population is foreign born. Big foreign born population here that come here. We also have a big population from Hawaii. I think there's 60 or 80,000 like Hawaiian transplants here. Like we have people from all over the world here. So it's not just California is constantly, you know, dominating Nevada. It's not, it's not how it is. You know, with that being said, in our presidential history, you look at the elections, they said it goes a lot, it goes, it's gone both ways a lot. And in recent years, what's interesting is even you look at the state level versus, you know, the presidential elections, you know, Nevada has not had a democratic governor in the 21st century. The last time Nevada had a Democratic governor was 1999, which is interesting because you look at the elections uh, in the 80s for pres presidential elections in the 80s, 1980, 84, 88, Nevada went Republican. 92, 96, Nevada went Democrat. In 2000, 2004, Nevada went Republican. In 2008, 2012, 2016, it went Democrat. And in every one of those, Nevada went with the winning candidate except for 2016. And if you might think, okay, well, last few elections have gone, for the president have gone to Democrat, that might be the way that you know Nevada's going politically. Uh, well, even then, it's it's hard to tell because obviously the state level, the governor has been Republican for you know the last 20 years or so, and also the last elect presidential election, uh, the separation was like just around two percent. I think it was like 2.4 percent was the difference, which was smaller than the last two elections. So you know it's just like you don't know how it's going to go. Next couple of years, that could change. The population could change a lot here in a few years, and even with registered voters, is a really good. Um, website I saw, uh, the link will be down below for this, is in Nevada, 
I believe the Democratic Party is at a lead in terms of registered voters, but that's been shrinking over recent years. It's actually been getting smaller, the lead for Democrats. Another big thing to keep in mind to this area, the state of Nevada, I think it's like 21% of our population are registered independents. I mean, 21%, that's a huge amount that can swing an election either way here at the state level and at the federal level. So again, politics in Nevada, they're just different. Like you will see both parties represented throughout you know, the municipal level, the county level, and uh, the state level here. With all of that being said, I do appreciate you guys for sticking with me through this video. I know this is a big topic for a lot of people to want to watch and talk about. I, people do comment on my videos already, even though I don't mention California in the video. They still comment about California's moving here to Nevada. You know, if there's something I missed, you know, tell me about it down below. I want to hear what you guys think about this, about, you know, so many Californians moving to Nevada and other states as well. Even if you live in some other state, you know, tell me what you think about this because this is going to have a major impact. California is that big of a state and they have that much influence that when you have that many people moving out, it is going to affect other states without a doubt. So tell me what you guys think down below. If any of you are looking to move here to Nevada, move here to Las Vegas from California, from some other state, and you want to talk to me about it, link down below. Clarity is where you can talk to me if you want to support me on Patreon. Link down below for Patreon as well. I want to hear what you guys think about this. This is a big topic. I'm happy to bring this video to you guys. That's it for this video. I'm Jacob. This is my life in Vegas.